So last time on Awful Commentary, we spoke about X-Men Apocalypse, and more specifically, about Apocalypse's four horsemen and how they're not quite as intimidating as they should be. Today, I want to move on to the heroes, Charles Xavier's X-Men. With this movie for some reason being set in the 1980s, what we're seeing now is a younger version of the X-Men that we originally saw in X-Men, Brian Singer's 2000 movie. That means we're getting young Cyclops, young Jean Grey, young Storm, young pretty much everybody you can imagine, except for Wolverine if he makes a cameo because he'll still look exactly the same. But much in the same way the Four Horsemen don't seem particularly scary, I'm not convinced that these X-Men can stand up to Apocalypse. So, let's take a look at the roster and see how they hold up. We'll start with the main man himself, Charles Xavier, Professor Charles Xavier. Professor X is one of, if not the most powerful telepath on the entire planet. He is a man of both incredible compassion and incredible intelligence. Unfortunately, despite his incredible power, he's been paralyzed from the waist down. In this universe, it was done by his longtime friend and rival Magneto. The problem is for Professor X, that he always gets, well, Professor X'd. In every X-Men movie, there is always some way found to leave Professor X completely useless. Because in every situation, Charles Xavier has the ability to pretty much stop whatever conflict is going on and instantly resolve it. He's been kidnapped, he's been medicated, he's literally been disintegrated, and that's a trope that probably isn't gonna stop in this movie. So with Professor X rendered useless, we're then forced to turn to the next protagonist of the series, Mystique. Mystique has constantly been shown to be an unlikely ally for the X-Men, and her shape-shifting abilities were actually the main plot device for the last movie, Days of Future Past. But if we're talking about her actual combat effectiveness against Apocalypse, I don't think that she actually has that much. Apocalypse is a being who exists almost on another plane to regular humans and even regular mutants. He is not a man who is going to be fooled by a simple shapeshifter. And more than that, amongst his four horsemen, he carries with him Psylocke, a telepath, who will instantly be able to tell when something is up. Nicholas Holt's Beast is a character split between the monster and the man. As a man, he is a great scientist with incredible intelligence and video recording skills. As a mutant, he's a big blue bear. He has enhanced strength and enhanced agility. But from what we've seen in the X-Men movies, combat-wise, he only really has a few strengths. Against humans, he fares well. He can hurl them considerable distances. But against mutants, all he really seems to be good for is leaping out of the shadows and injecting people when they're not looking. That is not something that is going to work against Apocalypse. The only horseman that he really stands a chance at taking down is Storm if she's distracted because she doesn't quite have the durability of the others. And unless Apocalypse can be taken down by looking at the news, he kind of seems a bit useless in this one. Next up, we have young Cyclops, young Jean Grey, and young Nightcrawler. I'm grouping all three of these together because, frankly, they all suffer from the same weakness, and that's that they're young. Of course, this is one of the points of the movie. We're here to see that young mutants, dramatically out of their depth, can come together to show that mutants can save themselves. But young Jean Grey is unlikely to have the abilities or the powers of the Phoenix, the only thing that could really dent Apocalypse in this situation. Nor will she have the abilities of Psylocke, who's likely to be her major rival. The strength of Cyclops' powers isn't in question, instead it's his ability to use them. Does teenage Cyclops have the accuracy of the adult Cyclops? No. Does he have the leadership qualities? No. Frankly, I'll be pretty disappointed if anyone in this movie is taken down by Cyclops removing his visor and just openly blasting the sky. Nightcrawler is perhaps the most useful mutant on this team. His teleportation powers means that he can catch up to Angel when Angel is flying. If Storm is in the sky, he can instantly be up there too. But unless his plan is to teleport Apocalypse's head off, he's not gonna do that well in a straight up fight against the villain. I'm actually a massive Nightcrawler fan. And normally he works particularly well with Wolverine because Nightcrawler is such a nice guy, Wolverine is obviously a bastard, and so their relationship, as well as the combination of their powers, always works brilliantly. 
with Wolverine not present in this movie, what I kind of anticipate instead is Nightcrawler teleporting Beast so that Beast can get closer to the action. Lastly, we have probably the most powerful member of Professor X's team, Quicksilver. This Quicksilver was many people's favourite part of Days of Future Past, and a lot of people prefer him to Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. In fact, this Quicksilver is so fast that he essentially stops time and has the ability to just move bullets a little bit out of place while they're flying. These sequences show that he's potentially faster than the Flash, although we've never seen him travel through time or break any sound barriers. Quicksilver is so fast that he could, in one attack, remove Magneto's helmet, leaving him vulnerable to psychics. He could take down Storm before she has a chance to use her powers. He could take down Archangel before he even gets into the sky. And he's moving so fast that he's probably going quicker than Psylocke can use her abilities to even think. But that means that Quicksilver himself is actually kind of game-breaking. And this is why he was removed from Days of Future Past halfway through the movie. If they had taken Quicksilver with them to Paris, none of the bad things would have happened and the plot just would have finished. In Apocalypse, if Quicksilver is there and has the ability to stop everything, well then he'd just do it and the movie would finish. So I have a feeling that Quicksilver is going to be added to the Professor X list of people to get Professor X. Even if that's not the case, the only part of the movie that we've seen him in so far is when he's running helplessly through the mansion looking like he's crapped his pants. That's likely to be because he's realised for the first time there's something that he can't escape. And that's probably Apocalypse. So what do you guys think? Do you agree that this group of young X-Men are probably going to get slaughtered the first time they go into conflict? Or do you think that maybe they're going to come out on top? Because of course they are, because it's a superhero movie. Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time on Awful Commentary.